and welcome to this edition of ACAP today for the week of May 25th, 2020. Happy start to summer, everyone. On today's program, we'll be talking about ACAP services and programs moving forward as June 2nd or June 1st, I should say, uh, marks phase two of Governor Mills' reopening plan. We'll talk with two ACAP leaders about ACAP's plans as we head toward the June 1st date and beyond that. We'll do that in just a moment, but before we get to that, we're going to uh, visit with some of the news and information that you can use uh, for today, uh, for this week of May 25th. We will start um, by sharing with you that all ACAP offices are closed to the public until further notice or unless otherwise specified. We will talk about that with our guests in just a moment as some of our programs will be resuming, but we will be open in a very limited capacity and to very specific uh, customers. And so we'll share more with you about that in just a few moments. We also wanna remind folks that we do have a new program and service called the ACAP Navigators. Uh, these are individuals who can help uh, families, households, and individuals um, get the services that they need. Uh, we're working currently with individuals who have applied for the rental assistance program, but we also are taking individuals uh, who are in need of assistance and who don't know how to navigate the services or are unaware of the services that are available to them. Uh, please do consider uh, contacting us if you feel that you could use navigation services. If you are interested in ACAP services, one of the great places to start is on our website where you can see there um, by the arrow is the request assistance online. That allows folks to actually complete uh, some of the information that we would otherwise be asking you over the phone in advance of that phone call so that when we uh, do uh, speak with you and connect with you over the phone, uh, we will be able to uh, help uh, determine what services you may be eligible for uh, before we even uh, communicate with you. So please do consider using that as a resource as well. We're also hiring uh, during uh, this pandemic time and can do all of that hiring process remotely from uh, receiving the application to orienting new employees. Uh, if you are interested in becoming an ACAP employee and meet the qualifications of the position posted on our website, we certainly encourage you to apply. Again, that can be all done right online. Financial literacy classes that are being offered by our Improving Outcomes for Youth program. We've done two of them prior to this week and we're doing another one uh, this week on the 27th, 28th, and 29th. Uh, the classes are from six to seven o'clock each evening. Uh, there is a benefit if you do attend and successfully complete all three classes, you are eligible for a $25 gift card at the end of that uh, course completion. Please do contact Chastity Holland at cholland at acap-me.org if you would like to register for that class. It's specifically for individuals ages 16 through 24. The Aroostook Cash Coalition is entering a new phase of their tax preparation program um, as they get that program back up and running. Uh, beginning June 2nd, uh, they will be offered, offering limited tax preparation services. Uh, they have recommended safety precautions in place to protect clients and the volunteers uh, running the program. It will include masks, one person per household, and bringing your own pen for signatures. If you have not yet filed your 2019 taxes and you have until July 15th to do so on the extension there and have a household income of below $56,000, please do call the United Way of Aroostook. Uh, ACAP is one of United Way of Aroostook's cash coalition partners in this initiative as are many other organizations, including the County Federal Credit Union. So we do encourage you to take advantage of this uh, service, this free service, if your income's under $56,000 in 2019. Uh, we also are encouraging people who are interested in quitting uh, smoking, um, especially with everything that's going on right now and um, certainly the pandemic being um, a, a disease that impacts obviously the respiratory system. Uh, but if you're interested in leading a healthier life um, and quitting tobacco, we do have uh, Elaine Sipe who's available to work you through that process and she can do it via uh, the Zoom platform or uh, at a distance certainly. Um, you can call her at 554-4151 or email her at esipe at acap-me.org. It's a completely free service and it is a great service uh, that can help you quit smoking at this uh, very challenging time. We also want to remind folks that if you are homeless 
or know of someone who's experiencing homelessness uh, or housing insecurity, our uh, hope and Re hope, hope um, and prosperity wellness shelter at the University of Maine at Presque Isle is available to help. Please do contact us um, and reach out to us, and we will help uh, with placement, whether it be in the uh, Sister Omer Sister Mary O'Donnell shelter or in our facility at the University of Maine at Presque Isle. Um, we encourage you to to reach out. Um, nobody should uh, not have a roof over their head, certainly at this time as well. Uh, we are winding down on the COVID-19 rent relief program. We've served just over 400 Aroostook County renters, and this uh, version of the program in partnership with Maine Housing uh, does come to an end uh, with the month of May. So if you have, for whatever reason, not been able to pay your May rent and have been impacted as a household uh, financially by COVID-19, please do reach out to us at 764-3721. We'll get that application process started for you, or you can start it yourself at mainehousing.org. Uh, backslash COVID rent um, and that program is available again through the end of this month. Uh, we are working with other agencies uh, regarding a potential rental assistance program moving forward after the month of July and we'll get those details to you as soon as we have them available. The Head Start program is currently accepting applications for our fall 2020 program. It's a great program and a wonderful way to ensure your children are kindergarten ready uh, when the time comes. So if you have young children in the household under the age of five years old uh, and would like to consider enrolling them either in our Head Start program or early Head Start program or potentially are in need of childcare, we have those services as well. Please do contact us at 768-3045 uh, or email us at headstart at acap-me.org. And healthcare navigation, we spoke uh, on last week's ACAP today with uh, Stan Kargonsky, who is ACAP's healthcare insurance marketplace navigator. If your job has been impacted uh, for any reason by the COVID-19 pandemic, you may qualify for this special enrollment period. Uh, it is a qualifying condition. Um, so please do uh, call Stan at, at call us here at the office at 764-3721. We'll put you in touch with Stan. He can help um, with uh, advising you appropriately. There's also the opportunity to apply <clears throat> or get more information online directly as well. Uh, but please do not hesitate to reach out if you have any questions about healthcare insurance at this time. The Home Energy Assistance Program is still taking applicants for uh, the current season, and that will be the case and through, the through the 15th of July. Uh, we do encourage individuals and households who have not registered yet to look at the income guidelines uh, on our website. Uh, those income guidelines have been lifted. Um, they're higher than they have been in recent years, and we estimate that uh, there are thousands of county households who are eligible for this program who have not yet applied this season based on those new guidelines. Certainly, if your household income has been impacted by COVID-19, that also is a qualifying um, incident for, for HEAP. Um, and we're only going to look back at the last past month of income uh, for those households. So please, please do call us if you're finding yourself in that situation. And the good news about this is, is even though the temperatures are going to be um, heading uh, above 80 degrees this week, that the any benefit will be on your account for up to 18 months or until it's fully utilized. So you will have that um, on your fuel vendor account this fall when you go to heat. Our workforce development team is also standing by at the ready. Um, this is a great time if you are finding yourself in a period of uncertainty as it relates to your career, to your job, uh, to reach out to us. We do everything from career assessments to obviously the career counseling, uh, providing assistance with job assistance, uh, short and long-term training our opportunities are also available, and work-based learning. So please contact Kathy Williams at kwilliams at acap-me or by phone at 554-4137 if you are in need of workforce development services or just want to find out what might be available uh, for you. And um, finally, we want to remind folks of the county resource aroosticcommunity.com um, that is available uh, to local residents. You can log on or you can call us at 764-3721 if you need assistance with anything or if you'd like to provide assistance to others, this is also a great place uh, to post that information. It is a site that you register for, but it doesn't cost anything to register for the site. And that's the news um, and information that you can use for this week, uh, May 25th, 2020. 
2020, the week of May 25th, 2020. Joining me now on the program to discuss our topic for the week, which is about the Aroostook County Action Program and how we're gearing up for what is considered phase two of Governor Janet Mills' a reopening uh, on June 1st, so this coming Monday, um, is Jamie Chandler, who's the Chief Operating Officer at ACAP. Hi, Jamie. Hello, Jason. Great to be here. Nice to see you from home. And also from home, uh, joining us is uh, Sherry Locke, the uh, Development and Communications Manager for the agency. Sherry, how are you? I'm well, thanks. How are you? Great. So um, let's talk about things because we are looking at some slight changes um, as of uh, June 1st. Uh, Jamie, I'll start with you, but um, pretty much uh, still obviously putting uh, the health, safety, and well-being of both our employees and the public in mind as we move forward on June 1st. Yes, absolutely. So uh, we are working on getting staff that um, are likely to be uh, meeting with customers sooner rather than later back into the office. Uh, we're ensuring that as we're bringing staff into the office that we are able to uh, maintain physical distancing protocols and um, ensure that we have proper uh, protective equipment so that our staff are safe and as they prepare to start meeting with clients our clients will be safe as well. So I know one of the key areas where there is going to be a change, uh, one of the services we haven't provided um, since the middle of March is childcare and those services are not beginning officially on June 1st, but shortly thereafter. So talk about uh, that, because I think that's probably the most significant uh, change in our operation moving forward. Yes, that's correct. So we will be resuming services for our families that have been uh, enrolled with our child care program up until our closure in March. And uh, we will we be opening for families that need child care so that they, they can either return to work or continue to work from home, whichever the situation uh, presents. That uh, start date is scheduled to occur on June 8th. And we will uh, have some, some protocols in place for the families uh, to ensure that we have a minimal number of people in the building uh, that do not need to be in the building. We will be conducting screenings and, uh, and checks, health checks for children as they arrive and for staff as they arrive for the day to ensure that uh, our safety protocols are in place. Our staff actually this week are uh, performing uh, new training on disinfecting and um, cleaning procedures so that our uh, environment is uh, safe as well. Jamie, the precautions are similar, but on a more of an outgoing basis for our uh, housing team um, that is now back in folks' homes. And that actually predates uh, June 1st. We were looking probably at the middle of May since we've been sending uh, members of our weatherization and home repair uh, teams into people's homes. Uh, what kind of precautions are being taken there and how can folks feel I get comfortable about um, if they receive a call from our housing team saying that their home repair project or weatherization job is, is up? Yes, absolutely. So our weatherization team will be calling uh, household uh, members prior to scheduling appointments to come visit. And we will, um, again, our staff and the homeowners will go through a screening process to ensure that uh, folks are not exhibiting any symptoms prior to the visits. When our staff visit with homeowners, they will be wearing pr uh, protective equipment, uh, masks, and, um, and we will also provide masks for homeowners if they don't have one and would prefer to be wearing masks as well. Our team is also uh, going through disinfecting and cleaning of their tools and equipment and uh, there are protocols in place so that uh, team members are not sharing of tools. Um, you know, di different protocols that we've put in place to ensure that uh, we're as safe as we can be as we're providing services. Now, Jamie, there are, you know, slight nuances, but there are some uh, the other programs that we have within our agency in, in different sort of buckets or categories from workforce development to prevention services to our coaching services, home buyer education, um, homeowner foreclosure. Uh, those type of programs, thankfully, are still able to be offered remotely. Yes. Uh, as you indicated earlier uh, in our um, providing our, our news updates, 
all of our services are still being provided remotely. We actually had a home buyer education class over the weekend. We had, uh, I believe, 25 participants that um, attended that class via online platform Zoom and uh, went very well. And uh, all of our programs that we've been offering remotely have had uh, a, a large response rate uh, and, uh, you know, get, makes us think a little bit about, um, you know, ongoing how we how we may be able to change some of the way that we deliver services to help um, you know ensure that everyone has access to the services that we provide. I think both of you both um, Jamie and Sherry will agree that things um, are, are very much in constant motion and constantly changing we're we're tracking a couple of new services I mentioned one in the uh, in the news sec section about a, a potential um, second um, rental assistance program, a different version of a rental assistance program that may be available in July. Um, so Sherry, from a communication perspective, um, tracking this information and getting them out is a, it's, it's, it's by the minute, not by the day, really. It absolutely is, but I feel so fortunate that we're in a place to be able to react and to get that information out to our community as soon as it's available. Um, as Jamie mentioned, classes like our home buyer education have actually seen an increase in participation. Um, and I think it's just a, the change in what's going on in our community, but also uh, people are becoming more comfortable with those different platforms, including online, um, and seeing this as an, an opportune time, you know, where they may have had other responsibilities or, you know, been traveling, whatever it may be, that they're really taking advantage of these opportunities. Um, and as an agency, we're in a great place to uh, continue to grow and to continue to meet that need um, as it is changing minute by minute. Sherry, you were uh, preparing some information not that long ago and it continues to sort of evolve like everything else does daily in terms of uh, new individuals, new households, uh, families that we've had the opportunity to serve since the middle of March uh, when this really became a challenging situation for all of us. Um, what are those numbers saying in terms of uh, the breadth and scope of, of the services that we're providing, not only the people that we're providing the services to, but the services themselves that are evolving? I actually think that's twofold. And the first is that we are finding that the, the clients that we have served in the past are actually being connected to multiple additional services. So maybe you have received one or two of our services, um, but not explored additional services. Maybe you didn't need them, you know, six months ago, but you do now. So we're really using that opportunity to connect clients between different programs and between different staff to make sure that we're meeting all of those needs. Um, I think the numbers that you're referring to is in um, the first month after after uh, the pandemic had started, um, our agency had seen an increase of over 600 new clients come to us. Uh, many of them, um, all of them had never used our services before. And at this point we're able, because of those navigation um, services that we're offering, we're able to connect those clients to multiple services. Maybe they called for the rental relief program and didn't realize that we had you know, multiple other programs that would benefit them at this time. Um, so we're really seeing growth in the agency and really working hard to offer uh, families that wrap around services uh, to help them get through the pandemic, but also to introduce them to ACAP for the future, whatever that may be. Um, you know, thoughts are coming, you know, we may be helping families get through emergencies, you know, with fuel or rent or food, things like that. Um, but we're also working with folks, you know, maybe this is the time to think about, you um, workforce and maybe, you know, receive some additional training. Maybe, you, you know, you've always thought about uh, going back to school, but there's been some obstacles. So our workforce team, for example, is there to help connect those dots and offer those supports if folks are interested in making those big life changes. Carrie, we also, in addition to sort of helping folks navigate ACAP services, we've taken on some additional responsibility in, in helping individuals in unique, um, in unique ways in, in the recent weeks. Talk about some of that. Yeah, so what we're seeing is that there are some other great programs being offered, again, in the community and in the state, um, but a lot of folks don't have access to technology or just are unsure, and we're really that trusted resource here in Aroostook County. So we're finding, uh, for one, we helped a lot of folks with the um, IRS uh, uh, relief payment that we received, that folks received. We uh, helped connect a lot of folks to that website, and they you know, would call us, and we would be kind of their eyes and ears on that website, again, because technology is so 
struggle. Um, we work, we're working closely with the census. The census is uh, something that's done every 10 years. It just happens this year that it's fitting in with um, the pandemic. So again, additional challenges and the census doesn't have folks going door to door. So we're really hoping to connect folks again to, to that, um, you know, that piece to make sure that Aroostook County's voice is heard. Um, this week, uh, more information coming soon, but we've partnered with St. Apollonia Dental Clinic, the United Way of Aroostook and Katahdin Trust Company to offer uh, dental kits here in Aroostook County. We have 4,000 kits that will be going out to um, the school lunch programs throughout Aroostook County because oral health is such an impar important piece of overall health. Um, and as we know, many uh, dental providers have had to be closed. So we wanna make sure that oral health is not being neglected. So again, it's things that um, we've always supported, but that we haven't or always had a program or specific staff to manage. We're kind of filling in those gaps and people are wearing many, many hats in our agency right now. So Jamie Chandler, Sherry mentioned um, needs, and I know that Sherry, we'll have Sherry talk about the community needs assessment she's working on in just a moment as sort of a coming uh, attraction that we're working on. But you led an agency um, initial uh, community assessment as it relates to COVID um, that sort of is, is helping drive our work plan moving forward as it relates to some of the key funding that we receive um, as a cap agency and specifically under the CARES Act. Talk about what your findings uh, were in that community needs assessment and how those findings and the work that we're going to be doing in the next, really it's beyond months, but years, um, is going to sort of um, respond to this crisis and beyond. Yeah. So uh, first and foremost, we know that uh, as, as people are staying at home more, the use of technology and the need for technology is, has come to the forefront. And so uh, as an agency, ACAP really has had the opportunity to look at our uh, technology infrastructure and really think about how our customers are connecting with us and how we can make that a better process. So uh, that's certainly one of the key findings is um, ensuring and, and looking at technology infrastructure for our agency and, and ensuring that no matter where customers are, whether they're at their home or, or, or whether it's when we are able to see them in person again, that, that we are able to, to meet those needs. Um, the other piece is that uh, with the um, economic impact that the pandemic has had, we know that we have a number of uh, community members who have never needed ACAP services before. Um, you know, perhaps they were just over the income threshold for many of the eligibility for the programs that we offer. And now due to job loss, uh, they, they are eligible and are not really sure how to navigate uh, our, our systems. And so we are really focusing on making sure that people that have a need in the community are able to get connected to services. And so the navigator services that, that you were talking about earlier are, is an important component of us being able to make those connections for uh, all the residents of Arista County that need it. Now, Sherry, Locke, the, um, the, the needs assessment around COVID-19 was conducted quickly as it had to be, uh, but uh, kept community action agencies are required to conduct more thorough uh, needs assessments on a regular basis, and you're uh, working on that project and leading that project for us right now. So help folks understand what that's all about and how they can, can become engaged eventually here. So every three years, uh, community action agencies are required to do a community needs assessment to better understand the community that they're serving, um, understand the client voice, and the, again, the needs that are in their community so that they can build strategies and plans to best meet those needs. Um, it's actually, as, although we're very busy and things seem you know, different than they have in the past, I actually think it's a perfect time to do the needs assessment to find out truly where the gaps are and how we can better serve our community. So that needs assessment will be rolling out to the community on June 1, and we're going to be asking all of you to help us to provide that information. Um, whether you're an ACAP customer, whether you're an ACAP donor, whether you're an ACAP employee, or whether you're a community member that knows very little about ACAP, we're asking for um, your voice to be heard. Um, we have created an online survey that can be taken. We will also have paper copies of that. 
Um, we will be doing focus groups. Uh, undetermined now if we'll be doing those in person or in a platform like this, but we really need the voice of the residents of Riverside County to be heard so that we can shape our work moving forward. Um, and this needs assessment does not, um, although it is conducted by ACAP and our staff and our board are very involved in this, this needs assessment really belongs to the people of Aroostook County and many, um, many agencies, many partners use this survey for that three year window um, to help them receive funding and again to shape their work. So it's really an important tool for Aroostook County. Um, and again, the timing at first, I, you know, I was a little concerned about the timing, but I actually think it's the perfect timing to really hear what those needs are and to hear that community voice loudly and in many different ways. So. Um, but we are going to need the more voices, the better. We really want to get a true picture of what those needs are, um, you know, no matter how you have been or have not been involved with ACAP in the past. So it sounds like next week at this time, we'll have a lot of new information to share with folks as the June 1st date seems to be a looming kind of large in a number of uh, announcements and projects. So uh, lots more to come, but what haven't we talked about, uh, Sherry, first, and then Jamie, that you wanted to share with our uh, viewers and those out there who are interested in uh, any services that we might be offering these days. I think it's just so important uh, to remind folks that all, although our doors are closed, our team is working and our team is working really hard to meet the needs. Uh, again, the needs that are in their typical wheelhouse, but expanded needs. And um, our entire team is doing, you know, what it takes and, uh, you know, thinking outside the box uh, and really working hard to serve our community. So if there's someone in our community that has a need, we would ask that you would get in touch with us either by phone or by email or that online profile. Um, so many ways to get in touch with us. And if we cannot provide you with a solution, um, you know, give us that opportunity because if we cannot provide you with a solution, I'm pretty confident that we can connect you to a community partner that can. But we are here, um, and especially if it's your first time needing service, as Jamie mentioned, that's, that's a tough spot to be in. We really want you to know that we are here for you and can help connect those dots for you. Sherry, I'd be remiss if I didn't ask you about the generosity of the community, uh, both private sector and uh, nonprofits that have provided us with uh, grant uh, opportunities at this time. It's just been uh, phenomenal, hasn't it? It really has, and it comes in all shapes and all sizes, and I think that's the beauty of it is people want to help this community, our community, and the way that folks are um, are giving is just, especially during this difficult time, is just, it's been phenomenal. Um, folks really, again, want to help their friends and neighbors, our, the foundation partners that we have, um, you know, are giving us a lot of latitude to say, you know, how can we best help you help your community? So it's been a fabulous, uh, fabulous feeling to know that the community is there um, at such a grand level during a, t a time of unknown, which you would think that, um, you know, that may go away. And it's actually been the opposite. We've actually seen, you know, an insurgent of, of assistance coming our way, again, to, to make Aroostook County a better place to live and work. It's been great. Indeed. Jamie Chandler, what haven't we covered from your perspective that you want to make sure folks knew about? Well, I just want uh, to echo what Sherry said, you know, just please know that although our doors may not be open, that we are still here to serve you. And if you have a need, please call us. We have staff at the ready to get you connected to whatever services that you may need, uh, whether we offer them here in-house or through one of our many community partners that we have. And so um, again, just thank you to, to everyone for your patience. Thank you to our staff uh, who have, you know, really had to learn a new way of conducting business. And so um, just, uh, you know, a, a sincere thank you to the community and our staff um, for all of the support through the pandemic and, um, and, and, uh, and we will get through this together. So I, the last thing I always ask my guests, and I know that you've had the opportunity to share this, but we've made it to the other side of the Memorial Day threshold. So unofficially, at least in the start of summer um, in Aroostook County, the temperatures seem to be indicating that we're there uh, this week. Um, so what is your advice for people for um, making it through a summer that's going to be different than we've experienced in the past? Fairs and festivals are not happening. Uh, family vacations are likely going to be curtailed unless things change quickly. Um, not your usual summer. So what's your advice to the both of you, Jamie? I'll start with you for, for getting through the COVID-19 summer. Sure. So, um, you know, keep, keep, your, keep your family members close and, and just really 
um, you take this opportunity to really enjoy the beauty and the the environment that is Aroostook County. It's a very special place to live and um, although we may not have the regular festivals that we're all used to, there's still a lot of enjoyment in the Aroostook County community. So I would just um, remind people to, you know, take a walk through a field or, um, you know, through the woods and, and just truly um, take in and en enjoy and savor um, all that Aroostook County has to offer. Sherry? I think Jamie has it spot on. We live in a, a gorgeous uh, place here in Northern Maine and it's our opportunity to slow down and take a look at everything that's around us. Um, spend some, you know, I call it bonus time with your family um, with, with less obligation and, you know, requirements of your time and just to really enjoy every minute of it um, and to make the best of it. I mean, how, um, you know, how lucky are we to live in such a beautiful place and, and such a generous community? Great. Thank you very much. Thank you to the both of you. Thank you to all of you for tuning in to ACAP today. Before we leave you, uh, as we do on each episode, we want to remind you all of the following, that we are certainly in this together, as our guests have both pointed out. And if you are in need of any assistance, please do consider reaching out to us. Call us. Uh, look, uh, send us an email at acap-info at acap-me.org. Check us out on Facebook. Sherry and her team are always placing some really great updates of information there. And from the sounds of it, we'll have a lot of uh, new information to share in the coming week. Uh, we also have our YouTube channel, which uh, some of our gifted early care and education and prevention specialists have um, have posted uh, information there, some great uh, activities for folks to view with children in particular. Um, and then of course, acap-me.org, where you can uh, begin the process of, of requesting assistance from our agency online there. And as we do each day uh, or each week now, the snapshot of the week, this is the ACAP Home Buyer Education class that both uh, Jamie and Sherry were mentioning. Uh, Greg Doak, ACAP's housing specialist, led a class of 21 individuals from around Aroostook County who took part in the online version of the HomeWorks Home Buyer Education class. Uh, that's all about becoming a smart buyer and providing tips on how to be a successful homeowner and there's some great uh, incentives including $3,500 off of your closing cost um, and a very very low interest rate uh, if you are successfully able to complete this class uh, and this was the class that was held this past weekend you see Greg Doak there up in the uh, upper left uh, quadrant or if you will of that uh, shot there and um, lots of folks certainly appreciated that even though it was a beautiful weekend but they were able to do it from the comfort of their own home and I dare say maybe a couple ventured outside uh, to take uh -huh. that Zoom class this weekend. So with that, uh, on behalf of the entire ACAP team, 170 strong from the very north to the very south of Aroostook County, most folks staying at home um, and, uh, and delivering their work product from there and doing a fantastic job doing so. Thank you all for joining us. We'll see you next week with another edition of ACAP This Week, where it sounds like we'll have lots of new information to share with you. Have a great week, everyone.